is a modern watch with a design based on a classic Seiko 1968 diver. Featuring a new caliber with a 72 hour power reserve and GMT functionality, something that might interest you at a price of about $1,500. What if it also came with an AR-coated sapphire crystal, a ceramic unidirectional elapsed time bezel, and it met ISO certification standards for scuba diving up to 200 meters in depth, and maybe it even had impeccable fit and finishing, and included a date complication as the cherry on top. What's up everybody, I'm Guy and you're watching Just Bluefish Watch Reviews and today we're checking out the Seiko SPB383, compliments of my good friends and channel partner, Exquisite Timepieces. Now if you're not familiar with Exquisite Timepieces, they're my local brick and mortar watch dealer here in Naples, Florida, and they are authorized dealers to sell dozens of brands, including brands like Oris, Omega, Zodiac, and of course Seiko and Grand Seiko. So if you're interested in this watch or anything else that they sell, I really encourage you to give them a shout. You can reach out to my good buddy Joe McHale over there or anyone on their staff via phone at 239-227-2932 or you could email Joe directly. You can reach him at joe at exquisitetimepieces.com. Now, I know, I know, I know, I know the big point of contention for people on this watch is going to be the price. And yeah, I have heard it a million times. Hell, I've even said it myself. Seiko has been going up market for years, especially when it comes to these SPB Pro Specs model watches, and even more so when it comes to their SLA models. Now the question is, are they worth it? Well, Based on my experience with all of the watches that I've gotten hands-on with over the last couple of years, I really can't say that these SPB watches that are priced between $1,000 and $1,500 are too terribly out of line. They have all been really, really nice watches with a caveat or two, which I will jump into when we talk about the negatives later on. Now, the issue is Seiko went from being known for fun and affordable watches between the $100 and $300 price point that everyone loved, and I know a lot of you think that they should have stayed right there. But I think it makes sense that they would like to be viewed as something a bit higher end than the other value propositions on the market from micro brands with, let's be frank, an absolute fraction of the brand history and heritage that Seiko has. Now, the bottom line is that everything is more expensive than it was five or ten years ago. And yeah, that was the time when Seiko was the king of value brands. But between inflation and, of course, the quality of their watches improving, I don't really hate the pricing of the watches on the Prospex SPB lineup. Well, I don't hate it other than it makes it so that I can afford less of them. But the days of the wide range of selection for $200 Seikos, I gotta say, they're long gone. But to be clear, something like this SPB383 is much higher quality than a $200 SKX. Now, that said, you could argue that it lacks a bit of the SKX charm, but that's subjective, I guess. Now, with that debate out of the way, and sorry, I did dwell on it, a little bit longer than I probably should have. But let's get down to business on this SPB 383, and let's talk about the features, the specifications, the pros, and the cons. But first, do me a quick favor, please. Hit the subscribe button if you're new here, or if you've been watching my videos and aren't yet subscribed. I gotta say, I noticed that about 75% of the people that watch my videos aren't subscribed, so please do hit that subscribe button. And do me a favor and hit the like button as well and let the YouTube algorithm know that you're enjoying my videos. So we have a 42 millimeter in diameter diver with a 48.5 millimeter wingspan lug tip to lug tip. The thickness is about 13 millimeters and it is 20 millimeters between the lugs. Now, as previously mentioned, we do get an anti-reflective sapphire crystal, a ceramic insert on the elapsed timing bezel, 200 meters of water resistance, up to ISO diving standards, and a 6R series GMT movement with a 72 hour power reserve. The case and the bracelet are in stainless steel with what Seiko describes as a super hard coating on their website. 
Now, back in the day, I recall that they used to do a marketing tagline of something similar, but they called it Dia Shield, I think, if I remember correctly. We're going back a number of years now. I don't know if this is the exact same process or if it's something new. They really are not very clear in their marketing literature about what it is that makes this whatever it is super hard and whatnot. That said, if it can help keep scratches off of it, then I hope it works. Now, with that said, you probably would want to keep the scratches to a minimum on this watch because the fit and the finish on the case and the bracelet is excellent. And to be fair, it ought to be excellent for this price. But rest assured, it really doesn't disappoint. The dial is impeccable as well, in my opinion. The handset, it's beveled, and the finishing on the hands and the dial markers is extremely excellent. When I pulled this one out of the box, I was actually pretty struck by how great the dial looks. Now, if you've ever looked at an Omega Seamaster Professional, in person, the dial on that watch just pops. This watch pops just like that. That's the best way that I can explain it. It really punches above its price point. Now, the bracelet is decent, but as I previously mentioned, this watch and most of the SPB series prospects watches that I have had experience with do have some negatives. And well, the bracelet is one of those negatives. Again, it is decent, but other brands at this price range are doing bracelets better. They're including features like screw-in links and tool-less micro-adjustment in the clasps. I have to say that Seiko really needs to step up their bracelet game if they want to compete at this price. I'm also not much of a fan of Seiko's entry-level movements, and that does include everything that I've seen in the 4R and the 6R range of calibers. Even when they're within specifications, I think their accuracy is lackluster at best. Falling into a range of minus 15 to plus 25 seconds per day, and look, that's just bad. Any watch over a couple of hundred bucks should be at a minimum plus or minus 10 seconds per day, at least in my opinion. Now, with that said, the real issue is that, at least in my experience, it's been very common for Seiko movements in the 4R and 6R range to fall well outside of those specifications and run extremely fast or extremely slow, which is a disappointment, to say the least. All that said, aside from accuracy, on paper, it's a pretty decent movement. It has 24 joules, it runs at 21,600 vibrations per hour, with an approximate power reserve of 72 hours. And while, yes, I can complain about the accuracy, I've got nothing bad to say about the durability of these movements. None of the Seiko watches that I've ever owned have ever broken down or needed a complete overhaul due to a failure. Now, of course, we all know about Seiko's glow-in-the-dark luminescence, and we all know how great it is. This one is absolutely no exception. The LumaBrite is applied heavily, and it's bright, and it is long-lasting. On the wrist, and my wrist is six and a half inches, it wears quite good. I think Seiko has a really good way with making larger watches wear nicely on a wide range of wrist sizes. And yeah, I do think that a 42 millimeter watch, given the kind of chunky profile of this case shape, is what I would probably qualify as a large-ish watch, at least in my book. But again, I find it very wearable. The bezel action is a very typical Seiko, at least in terms of feel. The grip texture on the bezel edges is good, and you get an excellent purchase on the bezel when you're using it. The feel of the ratcheting action is what I always describe as soft and spongy. But yeah, it is what it is. It's a Seiko bezel. It's not stiff. It's not sharp. It doesn't have a really loud clicking bezel action like some dive watches do. But it's not loose and it's not sloppy either. It's just a bit soft and spongy, if you know what I mean. And if you've used any Seiko divers before, you probably do know what I mean. Now, the GMT function on this watch, it's somewhat atypical. Usually, when you pull the crown out into the first position on a GMT watch, you can set the watch's main hour hand while keeping the watch running. On this watch, however, you set the GMT hand. Now, whether you care how this works will come down to personal taste, but both methods work fine, and they do the same basic thing. It's just a matter of getting used to it. Of course, you won't have a quick set date with this type of watch. You have to advance 
the time past midnight to increment the date complication, which can be mildly annoying if you're winding your watch up that it hasn't been started in a little bit of time. Getting the date in sync with, you know, reality, I guess we could say. Yeah, that could be a couple of minutes of your morning when you're first setting the watch up. Now, with all of that said, I have to say I am impressed with this watch, mostly. Sure, there are a couple of negatives that I mentioned, but I think that given the design and given the quality and the fit and finish, it's a great watch. I'd highly recommend checking it out in person if it's something that you're interested in. I think you probably won't be disappointed if you can get over that price. And with all of that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up for today. I do want to say thanks to you guys for tuning in and watching. I greatly appreciate it. And of course, thanks to my channel partner and sponsor, Exquisite Timepieces, for loaning me this watch for the video. I greatly appreciate that as well. And that will do it for today. So until the next one, bye now.